need to enunciate properly, okay? A lot of folks, when we're talking out in the street, and you and I are talking, you know, we just kind of slur our words, and we kind of got to go through this stuff, you can't do that on a microphone. Because on a microphone, the minute you start slurring your words or not enunciating properly, especially the digital mics that we use in the studio now, it sounds like crap, <laughs> okay? Um, you really need to learn how to enunciate properly, how to open your mouth and enunciate. So here's another, another little lesson that you, can, that you can learn at home, you can work at home. Find a piece of copy, a piece of something that you haven't read, and read it very slowly, opening your mouth really wide and pronouncing each and every letter in the word. Now that sounds silly, and the people in your household are going to think you've lost your mind. <laughs> But then again, you're anime fans. <laughs> but it really does work. It really does work. Because once you can really learn how to enunciate properly, then you can really start to manipulate. You can start doing dialects. You can start doing all that stuff. But as long as you're kind of stuck in this closed mouth way that we speak in, in the United States, it's going to be very difficult for you. You listen to somebody from Britain, they have a very round mouth. It's very open. It's, they pronounce everything very forward in the mouth. You can really hear the properly pronounced stuff. It's the same thing that we have to do here. In the United States, we tend to be right in the middle of our mouth. And that's another thing with dialects. With dialects, you can move your, 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 you can change it just by changing the placement. In Great Britain, they speak in the front of the mouth. Everything is, you know, that's, that's no good at all. That won't do at all. It's all very forward. In America, we speak in the middle. In Australia, they speak in the back. All right, so by just moving the word, where you pronounce the words forward and backwards, that's going to help you. But first, foremost, you need to learn how to enunciate before you can do all that. Learn to project your voice effectively. I think we just talked about that. I think I just showed you that, so I'm going to move on from there. And hit this 19 times and it will come out. I need to learn how to make these better. Get to training. All right? This is not something that you're going to jump in and do. Now, I know some people who have gotten in and they, and they got their first part and they had no training at all. And it was very cool of them. Second job, they failed terribly. Okay? Because they just didn't have the background. They, didn't have, they couldn't perform more than that one voice. It's very important that you get some training before you start doing this. Um, different places, you want some voice lessons or singing lessons. If you sing, that's the best way to do it. Because the placement of the voice when you sing and the diaphragm work that you have to use when you sing, it's the same thing that you do when you voice act. That's, that's, that's kind of important here. Vocal production for theater, that's another one. There's also, there's, if those of you go to community college and you're taking some theater classes, they almost always have some sort of vocal production class to teach you how to project on a stage. Now, I was fortunate when I was coming up, they didn't have all those little microphones. I had to learn how to project and fill a stage with just my voice. And I had a great teacher who made me sing the same song over and over and over again until I could hear it bounce off the back wall. And that's how I learned how to pronounce you know, there's, you shouldn't have to go through that cruelty now. But there are classes for it. Speech class. If you don't want to take theater, take speech. Speech and debate. That's great. You have to get up in front of people. It forces you up. It forces you to read. It forces you to project. It forces you to use your voice to be persuasive. Okay. And if you listen to the way I talk and some of the voice actors, there's a lot of different techniques we use to do that. And those, that's what you learn in the speech classes, how to use the music in your voice, how to use the various inflections and rhythms and things like that. So that's what you'll get out of that. Local choir, another great place. You know, if you've got a church choir or a local choir or a college or a high school or wherever you happen to go, get involved in that. Um, it gets you, again, it gets you performing and it gets you using your voice in a, in a, in a great way. And of course, voice acting workshops. They, they are all over the country. I have them. Scott McBeal does. Crispin Freeman's got a great one that he, it's mostly in Los Angeles, but sometimes he takes it on the road. Um, there, are, there are many people that you can take, they take classes with, and ultimately you want to do that, radio workshops. Be careful, though. Um, you know, get some references. There are some that will rip you off. Uh, there are some that will charge you a lot of money and promise you the world. And, uh, you know, you take our thing and go. I, the one that I hate, as I saw this online, says, make a million dollars with your voice. I know one guy that did that. One, I didn't know him personally, but Don LaFontaine is the only guy I ever knew that made a million dollars with his voice. And unfortunately, he's passed away now. But there's always, there's always one guy, but there's only one guy. Uh, the best you can hope for is to just kind of make a living, okay? And you got to be satisfied with that. So you really want to love this because it's going to be tough. Learn to be fearless. Fear is what kills most of us in this business. Fear of auditioning, Fear of the part, fear of success is a, is a tough one too. Um, and what I mean by being fearless is a lot of us get in, you know, get in audition situations and it's nerve wracking. I mean, you're going up in front of a bunch of people, you're looking for the job, you need the gig. If you're an actor and trying to work, and trying to work, 
chances are you're broke, okay, <laughs> at least for the beginning of your career. And you're going to have to, and you know, it's, it's a little stressful. And so you've got to be able to take some chances, be able to get in front of people, be able to walk up in front of a, a director and say, yeah, I'm the guy for this job, and do a good job with it. But if you're fearful about it, if you're, wor if you're worrying about how you're going to be judged by the world, by the director, by everybody, it's really going to get in the way. Remember what I said earlier, acting is all about connecting emotionally with a character. Well, you have to be able to focus completely on that. If you're focused on your fears, that's going to get in the way. Um, if you're going to be, um, you also have to take some chances along the way in your career. I mean, I know when I made my big jump into full-time show business, it was, I had a three-month job, that was it. I, mean, I was working full-time and I could, I could make the jump. Now, now, I didn't do it into acting, I did it into writing, but I had a guaranteed three months and that was it. That's all I, you know, but I made the jump. I had to be fearless, I made the jump, and it turned into an 11-year job. Um, that's where Power Rangers and all that stuff came out of. So it's, uh, you gotta be a little bit uh, gutsy to do this. At, so, at some point, you have to move to where the work you wanna do is. You wanna do animation, original animation, most of that's in Los Angeles. If you wanna do anime, most of that's in Texas right now. Uh, a lot of it's in LA and some of it in New York. Um, if you wanna do regular commercials, that you can do anywhere. And that's the cool thing about voice acting is, as long as you're not stuck on, I gotta do anime or I gotta do this, you can do voice acting in just about anywhere in the country. And uh, so that's pretty cool. Breaking into the business. It's difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, but look, there's, some, there's some advice that you can do. First of all, don't pack up, don't pack up and move to the big city. All right, well, you already live in a big city, but you know what I'm saying, New York or Los Angeles. Or Wait, you gotta get some chops. Look for chance, opportunities to voice act in your own community. There's a lot of places that do audiobooks, and they're all over the country. Gaming, right now, is, is casting all over the country. There is a game country company here in, in, uh, in, in Maryland. I'm not sure if it's here in Baltimore or down near D.C., but there's a game company around here. Pardon? Bethesda, maybe that's where it is. Yeah, Discovery Networks is here in uh, is is here in Maryland. Um, so it's uh, there's there's some there's some opportunities. Also, anybody with a small town radio station, they need people. Now they're not going to pay a lot of money, but I I well, look I learned how to do commercials by doing twenty five dollars spots in Bakersfield, California. Okay, so uh, and you, and you learn a lot by doing that. So look for opportunities to get your chops, to get your 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 stuff, your uh, your practice that you need to get. Online voice acting community is another great way to, to kind of get involved. There's a, a, a Voice Actors Alliance, voiceactor.com. There's some Voice Actor Alliance people here? That's cool. All right, cool. They do productions. They're a nice community of people of like mind who are trying to get to where you want to get to. They do little productions. They, there's just ways that they, that, that, that as a community, they network and, and get going. Uh, the ones that, that live in Los Angeles have, tend to help them each other get auditions which is helpful, and I know some, some of my students are also a member of, of uh, Voice Actors Alliance. Um, you know, that's where they communicate. Oh, there's an audition here, and now they're kind of all helping each other get work, and, and several of them are now working in gaming. So there, it's a nice way to go. There's another one, it's Voice Actors Alliance and Voice... Voice, Club. voice Acting Club, that's right, okay. So there's, there's a couple of them, that just look for those. Um, local radio stations I already talked about. Local ad agencies. Uh, in smaller towns, now you, you, if you're in a big city, uh, it's going to be tough because most of them are looking for union actors or at least people with a lot of experience. But you get a little out of Baltimore, you get a little out of New York, you get a lot, a lot of these places. And there are local ad agencies that do commercials for Joe's Swimming Pools, you know, or Franco's Tires or something like that. And they still need people to do voice work and for their commercials for television and radio. So you want to you look at the small ad agencies and submit to them. Volunteer reading is actually my favorite part of this because there are people that there are organizations all over the country that do audiobooks for the blind, and um, and it's a great way to practice. It gets you on a microphone, and at the same time, you're doing something nice for somebody who really needs it. So it's a kind of a win-win for you, win-win for them, and and I'm a big believer. You put good out in the world, and it comes back to you. So I, I recommend you do that. Now, eventually, you have to get to auditioning. Okay, and auditioning, I, 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 this is a segment that I just added in the, in the master class that we now, that we just started doing this year. Because I looked around at, at a lot of uh, online stuff and all of the classes are surviving auditions. Well, you gotta survive an audition? That's a crappy way to live. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's important that you, that you approach auditioning right. It's part of the game. You're gonna spend more time as a voice actor auditioning than you're gonna spend working. I don't care how successful you are. 
even Steve Bloom, who, who plays everybody. You know? Or Johnny Bosch, who's in every anime that ever was. You know? <laughs> they still have to audition. They still have to audition. Or you know, I can't forget Yuri, yeah. <laughs> Um, they have to audition, and auditioning can be stressful or it can be fun. And part of it is to, is, to, is to walk in with a positive attitude. You can't walk into an audition worried about the audition. Chances are, look, chances are you're going to audition and you're not going to get the part. That's what the odds say. Statistics say you're going to, you know, even on, on my best years, I'm maybe making 25% of my auditions, maybe. Okay? That are where I get cast. On my best years. And I only get called in on parts that keep, because I'm known. And I get called on parts that people already know I can play. And I still only get 25, 30% of them. So when you're first starting out, you're, you're going to get a very small percentage. So don't go in worried about whether you're going to get it. Because you're not. Just, just assume that you're not going to get it. Okay? But go in with the idea that you're going to have some fun. Okay? You want to have a positive attitude. You want to you enjoy the experience. Thank the people for having you in. Uh, find out about what you can. Be professional. Show up on time. Dress well. Don't dress weird. Don't cosplay. <laughs> I gotta tell you about Leprechaun Man. Okay, Leprechaun. <laughs> this just happened. This just happened. Right after, right after uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day this year, I was uh, we were auditioning for for a, a dub of a Chinese film. We just uh, by the way, if it, if it comes out here, it's called Little Sister. I highly recommend it. It's absolutely gorgeous. But this man walks in. My first audition of the day, and he's dressed like a leprechaun. <laughs> I mean, top hat with the flower, the shillelagh, the green tuxedo, the whole thing. And, and I'm looking at him, I'm going, what? And he says, uh, it's okay, you know, in my household, uh, St. Patrick's Day is like a four-day thing. So right now, he's told me that he's completely been drinking for the last three days, and now he's going to come in audition for my movie. And, and then, uh, and, sorry, this just gets weirder and weirder. So I said, okay, well, let's get him in the door, and, and I got him in, let's just get him out of here. And he says, oh, no, this jacket's a little tight, can I, can, you mind if I take it off? I said, okay, that's, that's fine. I start to read him. And first of all, he wasn't very good. But second of all, I, I, I look up, I'm, I'm in the booth, and he's in the booth over here, and the engineer's sitting over here. I look over the engineer, and the engineer's jaw is like sitting down on his, on his chest. And I said, well, what's, what? And I turn around, I looked in the booth, and the guy had taken his shirt off. So now I have a shirtless, semi-drunk guy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just praying he doesn't take his pants off, you know? <laughs> And so, you know what, and the, the fact of the matter was, is that if he was the best actor, voice actor in the world, I would not have hired him, because I wasn't about to put him in front of my client and make him look bad. And so that's the point, you've got to be professional, dress like you care. You don't have to dress up, you know, when I'm dressed on here.